we we know what someone says when they'll hit something. So, Carrie, D, are you saying you would hit me, <laughs> or you would hit Monique? Because those are two different experiences. <laughs> Listen, come on in the room. Mrs. Streisdale, anything for you, Mrs. Streisdale? <laughs> What's going on, y'all? I'm so sorry I'm five minutes late. Listen, let me tell you what happened. Remember I told y'all I have a graduated setup. I, I can see the questions on the screen now. I'm not squinting, looking on the phone. I went to hit the live button and everything. The phone, the light, the monitor, this light, everything just fell down. <laughs> I said, well, what the fuck? <laughs> everything just went boom. I said, well, girl, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to be starting at 2 o'clock today. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Are you guys having a great day? If you go check out my Instagram, not right now because we're in class right now. Put your phones away. But if you go check out my Instagram, I went playing badminton today. I didn't play tennis because, listen, I have a delicate wrist. And I'm just now starting, um, again, my working out regimen. And I thought, well, hey, instead of going to the gym and doing like 10 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, all that monotonous bullshit, why not do something that is a little bit more fun, a little bit more free, a little bit more... Um, enjoyable so i said oh y'all want to see my neck eh? <laughs> y'all can tell i'm a ghetto girl from the south <laughs> y'all want to see my nails okay let me explain again so i think i'm gonna always wear white if i get my nails done i think i want to always wear white it looks very clean it looks very stush bush you know very much so titty to the sky and <laughs> nipples high and titty to the sky so, on the other hand, I went and I got colors that I think potentially in the future I may like. So, of course, this is the white one. I like white. Like, you, bitch, I feel like Wizzy Kelly right now. Um, This black one with the glitter, I wasn't too sure. I don't know. Maybe on special e events. But, see, I don't even like how, like, I just got these done yesterday. But I don't even like how it doesn't go all the way. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I like the blue one. I really like the blue. Who's watching this right now? Any of my enemies watching? I like the blue one. Oh, <laughs> pot of blue. I like it. Now, I don't know if I would wear this one all the time, but I like this one. Um, Now, this one was one that shocked me. Y'all know I am the Nutella Corella. Y'all know gray, black, and white are my things. This one is a gray, like, metallic one that I really like a lot. And this one was originally supposed to be pink, but it came out like this horish red. Like, um, you want to smell my Punani boy? And I'm like, no. I'm a little bit more highbrow than that. So, yeah, to that one. Anyways, what's going on, everybody? My name is Oliver Twix. I am your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty. Here to do what, plus? The... Girl, I forgot my own intro. Trying to be cute and trying to switch shit up. I should have just said it all straight. I forgot what I came here to do. What's going on, everybody? My name is Oliver Twitch, your nerd boy cutie, reporter for duty, here to do the Lord's work once again. <laughs> and today, we have the distinct honor and privilege to talk to Monique from Cycle 16 of America's Next Top Model. Now, you guys know that Cycle 16... <laughs> I got some interesting history with Cycle 16. <laughs> I just thought. <laughs> Y'all know I think this is one of the most um, model-less seasons. Y'all know I love the photo shoots. I love the girls. I thought any girl this season could have won. I hung out with Liz Molly. Hell. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And all the things of the thing. So it feels so great to... Oh, and then, oh, um, Kasha, 
Yeah, yeah, shout out to Cycle 16. Anyways, is she here? Because I'm just going to ramble and ramble and scramble when I could be bringing her in to get the things of the things. Monique, do you have your water and your things ready? I sent her a request. <laughs> I be thinking about shit in real time. <laughs> Shut around, Oliver. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't say shit. It says waiting for Monique, waiting for Monique, uh, 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 wait, 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 wait
of the party, <laughs> Cycle 16. Like, I feel, I feel like in every reality TV show, the editors choose somebody who is the voice and the eyes and ears of the people. Like, it informs the people at home how you should be feeling, thinking, in this exact moment. And I think you, you are that person for Cycle 16. I mean, I really appreciate that. Like, I, I saw someone come up today and I was like, you know, sometimes when I like hear the way I was talking, mm -hmm. it was, <laughs> whew, it's a little, a little cringy, but um, it was funny, I guess. <laughs> Everyone is going up in the comments for your clavicles. They're like, she is clavicles. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bonnie, yeah. I'm just really excited to have you here, honestly. I really am. Like, you like, you know, and I say this all the time, you know, of course, I'm grateful for everybody who tells me yes. I'm not upset to anybody who tells me no. But all of us out there know there are, there are like certain girls that are like, oh, my God, if they do it, okay, this could be really cool. So the fact that you're <laughs> even here right now, I'm going crazy. They're going crazy. And we're about to even get more crazy as I'm about to get into these questions. Are you ready? I'm correct. Now, all the questions come from the fans. Every single last one comes from the fans. So blame them, not me. Yeah, of course. Look, I I thought about like going through and like, should I rewatch the season? It's been a long time, and like I'm an open book right now, so like everything is just let's just flow, you know. What is over there burning? <laughs> oh, incense. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I was like, bro, what's this little misty smoke coming across the screen? What's going on? It's a fire, no. though. Call the police. Okay, okay. So, laid back. Oh, eight wants to know. Can you ask her if she still gets her way and loves her life? <laughs> I mean, yes, of course. <laughs> I still can't believe I said that on TV. Like, I always get what I want. Or what did I? <laughs> um, I'll do what I want. I love my life. <laughs> like the power, you know, um, the power of your word. I really believe in that. So, um, of course, there's days where I don't get what I want, and then you make the necessary changes. Mm -hmm. so, um, but yeah, I still love my life. So. Absolutely. What made you audition for America's Next Top Model? Um, it was funny, actually. I was casted on this website called Model Mayhem. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of that site, but when I turned 18, I was, I was looking for ways to get back into modeling. And this website connected you with photographers and um, they, they casted me actually, they found me, I think probably like a height search or something. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come and try out for the show. And I was like, okay, like I've never really watched Top Model growing up cause um, we didn't really have like cable like that. So when, so when I went to the audition, I was just kind of like going to any other regular casting except my life was like kind of kind of interesting and i'd gone through some weird interesting things like in high school that kind of probably that that's what made like casting be like oh yeah like we're gonna keep her in the process and mm -hmm. um and then it just like kept going from there like you know i made it to each stage of the interview process and every time i was just like oh my god this is actually happening mm -hmm. <laughs> and um and yeah, I'm, I guess I was, I was just really lucky in that way. So whatever you care to share, what about your experiences in high school you believe influenced you getting casted for a top model? Um, well, I'm from a really small town of like a thousand people. So that's okay. like already super weird. And um, I went to school with like a hundred kids. Where in, about in, in the States? In Illinois. Illinois, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, right on the border of Wisconsin and Illinois. So gotcha. Um, that was that already stood out. Like I was always like the really really tall girl that didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. So um, so where were we again? What's the question? What? Oh, what? We, yeah, so mm -hmm. what I had I had just gone through this crazy thing where I was a senior in high school and my um my gym teacher was like in his early 20s mm -hmm. came on to me like in between class went like between classes he was like so I heard you're a model do you ever 
did you ever consider adult film? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, and I was like, no, like my mom taught me better than that. Like I would never even do Playboy. And um, he's like, well, if you're interested, you know, here's my card, let me know, you can audition with me. And I was like, okay. And then I told one of my friends and then it like spread all over the school. And my mom found out and she was like, oh, hell no. Like she, she put me in the car and took me straight to the police station. And I like had to file a report against this guy. And then, right. uh, so when I told that story, everyone was like, wait, what? And then um, right. I was going to court to testify against this guy. And I had like some, some weed in my purse and I ended up getting like arrested on the spot, going into the court. <laughs> it was not my greatest moment, but. Wait, you said you had meat or heat? Weed, like marijuana. Oh yeah, weed, gotcha, gotcha. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> So that was like, um, I think that just made everybody laugh, like that, that story. And then I remember the producers being like, oh, yeah, like she's drama. We want her. Mm -hmm. OK. But, yeah, that was that was. And then I also at the time, like I was going to Chicago a lot. And like I found this little like group called Glam Live. And we would do like fashion shows in the clubs. And I can get I could get in to these places underage. Mm -hmm. And I invited a couple of the casting directors to, like, come see my show. And I don't know. Maybe that, that helps my um, my chances a little bit. But, yeah. No, that's something you definitely will remember. So, so that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, that was the beginning process. And mm -hmm. I had just, I had just graduated high school, I think. Mm -hmm. Like I was barely 19, I think, when we started filming. So you were still a baby. Yeah, absolutely. And I had uh, I had touched like a little bit of the real world by like, I would take mm -hmm. the train to the city like every, every chance I got and just like be around that energy was really exciting mm -hmm. for me. So I was exposed a little bit to the world, but I was still very naive. You know, mm. I look back on that and I'm like, gosh, I could have been so much more prepared, you know, but, but that's just, I guess, a part of my story. So, you know, as a, um, thank you for sharing that as like a, a little, a little, um, side note, as we talk about, as I interview you girls, of course, there's a, a bigger conversation happening guys about, you know, reality TV and all that discourse. I remember watching TV, and this is America's Next Top Model, this is MTV, this is like BET shows. I remember as a child thinking that 18, 19, 20, 21 was old. Yeah. Like, I used to think, I used to think at 18, 19, 20, 21, you are an adult, like, you are grown, you know the things. And it's like, I'm so happy nowadays there's some normalization when it comes to age. Like, Lizzo just turned 33. You know, there's so many other people who are older who have thriving careers, but I just remember thinking those ages were adults. And I'm like, no, this, this is, you're a child. Like you're a right. child. Yeah, such a baby. Um, and we were all so young on that show. And even mm -hmm. now, like, I just turned 30 a few weeks ago. Congrats. Thank Congratulations, you. you're number one. Yeah, I feel good about it. Um, but, but even now it's like, okay, like your whole 20s, are so, there's so much growth during that time and I'm definitely not the same person I was when I was on that show, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of growing pains and um, yeah, 19, God, I might as well have been like 15, so. You, know. you might as, you might as well, you might as well. I'm 25 now, I just turned 25. And That's a age, that was one of my favorite ages. Listen, no, it's, de it's definitely my favorite age so far, but. <laughs> I'm like, I was listening to Yala Van Zandt, and we're going to get back into the chat. We're going to go, we're going to do a and Roll Call for all of you bitches out there that's getting impatient. Listen, all right? Yeah. But I remember, I, I was listening to Yala Van Zandt today, and she was talking about, like, when you're in your 20s, like, you make all these decisions and all these choices that, like, years later, when you look back on it, you're like, girl, why did I do that? Why did I subject myself to that? That shit did not, it didn't even matter. All the other stuff. So that's your, the, I'm celebrating you being 30. That is amazing. I can't wait till I'm 30. <laughs> 
yeah, I feel like I'm definitely more grounded in who I am and feel like I've made it out of the dark ages, you know? <laughs> I, a comment just came through from Carrie D. English from Aww. Who Won Cycle 7. She said she, she said, I'd hit. And we know what we, we know what someone says when they'll hit something. So Carrie D, are you saying you would hit me? <laughs> or you would hit Monique? Because those are two different experiences. Carrie D, I come to the bedroom with lashes on and nail <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, I love her so much. She said she'll hit us both. Now, my next question okay. is, would you hit us both at the same time? At the same damn time. <laughs> oh, my God. I love Carrie. just met her um, in January. And, mm -hmm. and we just hit it off so much. Like, that is my soul sister. <laughs> Love her. She just said, and I, I'm reading this out because when people watch this uh, later on YouTube, they want to see these <laughs> comments. She just said, I want to be on top. <laughs> wow. Let's move on, y'all. That was really good. That was really good, Carrie D. As y'all know, I'm talking to Carrie D this Friday, and I'm so excited. There are some chats like the one I'm having with Monique where I've been talking to these girls for a long time. You guys just don't know it because I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm DMing with such and such. But, you know, these are people I've talked, you know, over weeks and months and stuff like that. And Carity is someone I've definitely had a lot of conversations with. So I'm so interested to see her in real time and have a nice kiki with her. She's amazing. And she's an amazing photographer, too. Like, I I shot with her. My Actually, my first shoot this year was with her. And oh. she filled it. Like, just, she just really knows how to make you feel comfortable and sexy and fun energy. And the pictures, mm -hmm. like, every single shot was fire, like. She's really talented and a sweetheart. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a and roll call where I name every person who was casted on your cycle. Wait, somebody told me that casted wasn't a word. Is casted not a word? Maybe cast? Who was cast on your cycle? I'm okay to be corrected. Is it cast? Someone deemed, they were like, bitch, I hate to be the girl to tell you, but cast it is not a word. But I'm like, correct me. Don't have me out here looking crazy, okay? I can be corrected. All of the twins can be corrected, and I can say, yes. I'm sorry. Okay, who was cast? All right, perfect. So from now on out, I know to say, we're going to talk about all the girls who were cast on your cycle. Ooh, girl, that's okay. What the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> who was cast on your cycle? And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. The first person is, wait, yes. The first person is Susan. <laughs> yes, I'm on the right cycle. I got to no. hold up. We did not have a Susan. I would know. Wait, hold on. You mean? <laughs> no, this is wrong. OK, yeah. so someone on embarrassing so normally when i do these i pull them up on wikipedia and i just read it in order someone went on wikipedia and changed out all the names shut up <laughs> so are you changed out all the and so when i said susan i'm like bitch ain't nobody named susan but i'm thinking you know maybe i'm mixing and mingling just for the shits of y'all, let me tell y'all, whoever took their ass on Wikipedia and went to Top Model Cycle 16, I'm going to tell you what, who they said was on this cycle. Susan Leia, Short, Cheryl Levin, Magara Howie, Hannah Jolie, Montana Evans, Ka Kalisha Farmer, Shavonda Gilston, Mackenzie White, Malia Kragar, Gabriella Reyes, Dylan, D Dylan Bedar, Sarah Carlisle, DeAndre Yesley, and the winner was a bitch named Cindy Raywood. Who? <laughs> Earth. <laughs> one second. Let me find the right one. I am so sorry. That was slightly funny. How is that even possible? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were talking about, like, the girls that got eliminated before us at first. I was like, I don't remember Susan. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. The first person out was Angelia. <laughs> Angelia, yes. Uh -huh. um, I mean, like, I'm going to start off by saying, like, 
our whole season is we were really close like i didn't really watch a lot of other top model seasons but ours like i feel is like really special because we all really got along like mm -hmm. i know there was drama on tv but like when we were in it we were all like in it together so angelia is a beautiful sweet smart like super sexy <laughs> um woman and i know she just i think she just got married mm -hmm. and um i've met up with her a couple times in miami since um since the show and we keep in touch like here and there on, on social media but um yeah i absolutely love her and um i want to like oh, no oh y'all we got to bind it up y'all tyra we bind you are you back? Oh, only took one. She's back. Okay. Oops. No, you're okay. Um, I love Angelia. She's really, really fucking funny. And her body is ridiculous. Like, she's, like, from another planet. Now, I want to know, after hearing Mr. J talk about Cycle 16, Episode 1, what was going on in the background with him in production and his roles and powers being limited, I want to know, at that first photo shoot, could you detect any of that chaos going on? The first photo shoot was with Russell James, right? Yeah. It was the one when you guys were, like, behind the scenes at the fashion show, yeah. and they were taking um, beauty photos of you guys getting dressed and stuff like that. But he said that early, and I don't know if you watched the one he did on Cycle 16, but I remember vividly him saying that at the first one, because they were doing, like, some of these creative changes and, like, limiting his role, in the beginning, they told him not to, um, not to aid the girls in the photo shoot. And then I guess as the people, as the producers were watching the footage, it didn't, it didn't have a good feel, so they eventually told him just to go in and do his thing. Could you sense any of that stuff going on? Um, <clears throat> I didn't really sense that as much um, because I think we were, we were all just like so nervous to mm -hmm. be there. The photo shoot was us getting prepared for the, the fashion show. So we were in this like beautiful estate in Malibu like I had never seen a house like that before. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there's just like one photographer, he, he shoots Victoria's Secret models. So, and he's like super hot. So we're all just kind of like, okay, like how do we get like in front of him? So mm -hmm. he, with enough time that he's like gonna take a good shot. And um, I, you can just see it in my face in that first picture. I'm like looking up at him, it's like, I'm looking at the makeup artist and I can just see like this, this energy in my face. It's just like, Oh my God, what is happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, that's what I remember from that. Now the people are, t the people are telling me that I'm mixing up my cycles 15 and 16, but I could, I could have sworn in his Jay's chat that he said, cause I, I remember him talking with Molly when he said this, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Fact check me later guys. We're going to move on to the next person, which is Andre, who didn't get eliminated. She quit. Yeah, Audi. Um, you know, I really wanted to, I wanted to deal with this um, publicly and, and just apologize again for um, the, the way that I was edited. Um, Audi and I were, like, really close. Like, she, her and I, bonded and I remember her um like coming to our into my room into our mm -hmm. room and like sitting on my bed and like telling me this this story like about her family and like mm -hmm. really opened up to me and um it was so fucked up because I remember watching the episode like the commercial was like cut to me like I can't believe she's here right now or something like that mm -hmm. and it was like the way they edited it was like I couldn't imagine like the 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 trauma that she went through with her family mm -hmm. and looking back on it now I was just like god it was such an ignorant um just felt like very like white privilege just like just really gross um um the way that came out and I'm really sorry that like people that her family had to see that and and um 
what I was trying to say is that like I couldn't um, I couldn't get the mental strength to participate in something of that level if I had lost a sibling um that way yeah that way so um I love Adi so much she's such a sweet pure grounded soul and um I I it sucks that I never got to really see her again like that um like I really really want to get a re we talk about doing a reunion all the time mm -hmm. so Adi is amazing like we we were we were really close mm -hmm. have, it, have you spoken to her yeah I called her as soon as I fucking saw that commercial and I was like oh my god like that is not and I know that like her family was probably like what the hell like um so yeah I did I did call her right after that and apologized and I'm like geez like some some of the way that I the things that I said were sounded really messed up yes ma'am so I'm, yeah, I I'm sorry about that <laughs> we all applauded in the classroom for being self-aware and taking <laughs> accountability and responsibility and real life. That is great. That is great. That is great, 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 great. You bitches out there watching, take note. <laughs> um, what about Nicole? Nicole is amazing too. She's um, super smart and grounded. And she was, she was um, one of the models that we all kind of looked up to because she actually was a working model. Like she traveled all over the place and like, um, she's like insanely photogenic so mm -hmm. when we saw her elimin like eliminated that earlier we were just like all right this is not this is not real <laughs> like mm -hmm. what's going on um i guess she was a little bit more on the quieter side but maybe i think that's probably why they cut her um mm. gorgeous um yeah really sweet girl and she just had the most beautiful baby have have you seen her? Instagram? No, I have not seen the baby. It's like this perfect little, like reminds me of like a little surfer baby, like this bleach blonde. You said a surfer baby? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you can go to the beach and start surfing. Mm-hmm. Congrats to her. Congratulations. <laughs> like a nurse now, so she really took her career somewhere else. And um, I'm really proud of her. It's beautiful to see. Mm-hmm. The next person is one of my favorites from the cycle, Dominique. Dominique is amazing. I really bonded with her too. Um, just so cool. Like just really good energy, super fun. Um, she actually taught me how to fit, fold a fitted sheet. Re Those <laughs> things are difficult. It's really difficult. <laughs> And I think about her every time I do it now. Like, um, that was one of our like, when we got eliminated, when we got eliminated, we all got to hang out again. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, she taught me how to fold a fitted sheet, and I know she has a, ba a beautiful baby now too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I love Dominique. She's hilarious and super just down to earth and real. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it about her. What about the next person is, at the time, guys, her name was Sarah. People down in the comments, remind me how do they identify, again, by their name. I know that they are um, non-binary, right? I believe, I believe, if my, if my memory serving me correctly. I can't remember exactly what their name is right now, but at the time, she identified as Sarah. But guys, right now, someone quickly, y'all typing every, everything else. Remind or, me of her. Or Rune. Rune. Rune, there we go, Rune. Mm -hmm. I don't rune. know if it's Rune or Rune, but I should clarify that. Oh, now if her name is Rune, now that is sickening. <laughs> rune is sickening. I love it. <laughs> oh, rune, rune George. Rune George, yes. Ooh, wherever she is, someone tell her right now that Oliver Twig says that is a superstar name and she needs to patent it right now. Rune, rune George. My name is Rune really? George. At her and you gotta get them on here. They so, sorry, they 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 yeah they because they like I've been in contact with George Rune. I've been like they're kind of like a spirit guide for me now. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I have questions about really yeah and like like 
I've needed some guidance in my life about like learning about um, this fluidity. And um, they're so inform informed on everything and, and they explain it in a way that doesn't make you feel like, oh God, I'm an idiot for saying, you know, pronouns wrong or mm -hmm. you know. Um, they, they have helped me so much in my life and also inspired me like i um ended up moving to new york because they were living there and mm -hmm. like well there was a couple of reasons a couple of people that encouraged me to make that move but george is one of them and um like george was always like that on the show too like i remember in one of the earlier episodes um they taught us how to put a condom on a banana like they were very like sex ed this is real life like let's talk mm -hmm. about it. awkward it's not weird and we were all like oh my god like <laughs> so gross stop and they're like no this is how you do it like <laughs> i was shocked that they didn't put that on the episode but it was everything and also yeah. incredibly photogenic and talented and um yeah amazing human being mm -hmm. absolutely welcome guys please forgive me i'm not misgendering on purpose in my brain i'm remembering her within the con see I, i'm doing it again so I, I am remembering them within the context of which we are discussing which then they identified as sarah plus i have a bad habit already i innately t I, I i give everything the female pronoun like my phone is she her and if guys i don't know if you notice notice when i'm talking to a heterosexual um male contestant you'll see me sometimes pause because i'm about to say yes ma'am or yes god girl and all those things so i'm so sorry again they identify as rune still debating on rune george rune. and their pronouns are they and theirs and them yeah I, yeah i'm pretty sure that's what they go by Mm -hmm. um, but yeah just like talking to them about you know transgender non-binary like mm -hmm. really really helped me um understand like just how like it's a it feels like interesting at first to like get people's pronouns right but it's just like a really simple thing like when you can get it mm -hmm. in your head like oh by the pronouns they want to be called like mm -hmm. it's you know pretty simple yeah so, you know, like, they're such an amazing activist, like, leader, and we need more people, like, Rune. Shit, I should have asked before. Can someone send I, me her? Can, here I go. Can someone send me their Instagram? Because I want to see what they are doing. Because yeah. every time I talk to someone who knows Rune, um, they're like, they are so amazing. They're doing all these great things. I want to see somebody out there that is watching. Please send me their Instagram. Please. For me. Yes. And if they don't know it, I just recently re-added them on Instagram. So. Oh, okay. Well, send it to me, money. Yeah. Um, the next person is Dahlia. Dahlia is super sweet. I have got to hang out with her a couple times since the show because she's in LA too. Or I think mm -hmm. she's in the county. But another one that just had a beautiful baby. Like, he's so She had a baby? Had a baby. He's gorgeous, like the face, the lips, oh my God. Um, and she's like a real, like she's a bad bitch, but super sweet, mm -hmm. um, very sweet demeanor. And she's a, an amazing model. Like I did a couple shows with her and she's just so elegant and poised and put together and just a real class act. And I got to meet her family too. And they're really sweet. <laughs> You may not know the true E Hollywood story, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Why do you think she struggled, or what what appeared to be struggling on the show? Because she, we know she had um, past history as a model. She has insane bone structure, and the symmetry of her face is what is crazy. She's regal. She's confident. She's all these things. Why do you think she struggled on the show? Um. I guess the first thing that comes to mind is maybe she was a little too stiff feeling. Um, sometimes, like, I know when I shoot, I need a good, usually, like, 10 minutes to warm up. 
-hmm. and then the start flowing we didn't have that uh, option on top model mm -hmm. like here's your time get your shot and then of course it's all up to them what shot they choose so um i think i remember her saying that she was struggling a little bit just feeling comfortable i, mm -hmm. I don't know how long i don't really remember but maybe like yeah maybe just a, a little too posy or something maybe. Um, ridiculous her yeah she was another one that had been working um before the show and mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe she was a little bit on the quieter side. I really think that's gotcha. what I do with. Like, if you weren't talking enough or ca causing drama, like, you were out. Oh, listen. W when we all look back at it in class, correct me if I'm wrong, the Cycle 16 girls, like, those last, like, seven, eight girls, y'all had it going on. <laughs> y'all had it going completely on. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot of personality there. The next person on our list is Michaela. Michaela is mm -hmm. hilarious. I don't know if you guys have watched her like little YouTube like stuff that she films with I believe, recently. Um, not. I, I think she's still doing it, but um, it's been a couple of years since I watched her her acting and stuff mm -hmm. and. It's like, I think her thing is called Gang of Babies, and it's like hilarious, um, like little skits. Mm -hmm. So I always love that about her. I, um, I met up with her in Miami a few, like probably five years ago. I actually dated her brother for a little bit. So y'all were sisters. We were going to be sisters, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he was a great guy. He was amazing. He treated me really great. But I was just too young. And I just needed to still be free, you know. Aww. So, um, but I love, like, I got to meet her her mom and her sisters. And they were so sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. um, really beautiful family. Okay. <laughs> and she's, she, yeah, she's married now. So I guess she's next on the baby list. On the baby list. Everyone's having babies. I want to have a baby. Oh, I just want to be able to give it back, like, after a month, but... <laughs> Do you have siblings? All of my... So, I grew up the only child. However, I grew up the only child. My mother raised me, single mother. But my father has four other um, siblings that, unfortunately, a little peek into Oliver's life, I didn't meet... I didn't... I didn't grow up with any of them. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, her and I spoke on and off throughout the years on the phone. And then my other brother, it's five of us total, my... The next oldest above me, him and I met for the first time and I was when I graduated college. Wow. But him and I have such a strong bond. Um, my other two oldest brothers, I've probably only spoken to them once in my life each. And I yeah. tried like probably like a year ago to reconnect with one, but I haven't I've never met him. I don't know what they look like. Wow. So yeah. The mm -hmm. one you you guys look alike? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh-huh. But he's like, my brother, well, I can talk about him. He's probably watching right now because he, he loves my little gay ass. But my brother, he's um he's in the um what is he in? Is he in the is that the military? Cause I'll cause I, I crack on him like, oh, you're not that strong. You're not in the military, so boy bye. Um he does something important for the government, but he's chocolate, he has nice muscles, he looks he's he's really like the manly version of me. Like if I was a a man, 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 you know, I probably will look like that. But since I'm a fabulous felon, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's, he's like your, your, your twin, like. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, the next person on our list is Jacqueline. Oh, my God. I love Jacqueline. Like, how could you not love that girl? She's so Jacqueline. Sweet. And her accent is completely real. Like. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it is really like that mm -hmm. first we were like i was like this girl is so sweet and nice like what is going on and then i realized like she's just really authentically genuinely a sweet really sweet girl mm -hmm. and i got to meet up with her like maybe a year after the show and we had lunch and i think she was gonna move to la or something like she's really sweet but she also has this like really like sexy side to her mm -hmm this like really good girl that maybe 
could have a little fun, but mm -hmm. like wouldn't really show that side. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I don't know. I lost touch with her. That's one of the girls that like. Um, she doesn't really do social media. I feel like that much. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I haven't talked to her in a while, but I love her. And she was, I think she was the only one that was vegetarian during our cycle. And I remember, mm -hmm. like, I remember she was like, we were there for Thanksgiving and she's like, I'm going to have a tofurkey. And I was like, what is that? Like, <laughs> now I have tofurkey every Thanksgiving. But Oh, nice. Well, thank you, Jacqueline. Baby, come back yeah. to us. We want to talk to you, baby. Yes, we miss you, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Next on the list is Miss Kasha, the grand I, diva. Kasha. I love Kasha. I'm actually, I need to meet up with her because um, she's in LA now, too. So she was like the girl that we all kind of like looked up to for advice because she was, mm -hmm. I guess, a little bit older than us and also worked a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, She's always like very poised and put together and just like killed every single shoot and acting thing. Like, I feel like she had a lot of, um, I guess, experience and training. Mm -hmm. She was really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we message here and there. Like, I really I want to meet up with her and just reconnect and just support each other, you know? Yeah. So that is on my list. The next person on our list is the everlasting <laughs> Alexandria Everett. Alexandria is one of my best friends in the world. Like, Oh, really? Yeah, it's funny because people are always like, was well, Alexandria really like, I'm like, no. Like, she's the sweetest, most loving, loyal friend that I, like, one of my main ride or die yes, girls. ma'am, Miss Alexandria. That's what's up, girl. Yeah, and she, love her like, friends. she was, like, one of the only girls, like, one of my only friends that really, like, came through on my birthday and, like, mm -hmm. planned this whole trip. We, I spent my 30th with her, actually, and her little sister and her niece mm -hmm. um, from Big Bear. And, like, we've gone through so much. You know, we've gone through these phases of life together. And Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. That is, you know what? It pains me so much. Well, it don't pain me. I'm disappointed. Let me use my words right. I'm disappointed that I did not get an opportunity to talk to her and all that snafu baffu happened because I think, I don't know, it's something that the Lord put in me, but when these girls come on here who have um, not the best reputation on the show, as long as they come on here with the right attitude and they're open and honest and they're, and they're talking about things and they're explaining things, a lot of girls have walked away from doing these chats with the people feeling so so different about them. So different about them. And I don't know. If, I don't know if you've watched, you know, my my things in the past. But I ask questions in such a way that people, at least I try to. I try to ask questions in such a way where people don't feel like they're being villainized or anything like that. I just want you to explain these things that people think about so that people can understand it from your psyche and probably extend some compassion. Their attitudes may change. Right? Like I'm so. Like I was looking so forward to Iyala Van Zapping, <laughs> Iyala, Iyala Van Zanning with Alexandra because watching her and me being smart, you know, I'm a smart guy. I know that when you watch TV, that one hour is probably two days, three, three, four, five days chopped down. This is yeah. only one side of one person that, that they've decided to show. So I was looking so forward to like talking with her and hopefully unpacking some of those things. And listen, Alexandra, if you're listening, Monique, go back and tell her Oliver doesn't have any part feelings towards her because I understand her ideology behind certain things. If she ever feels it in her heart for us to connect one day, I would so appreciate it. And I think it would be so amazing for her. But if not, Christmas is still coming. <laughs> Um, I know, like, the last time I talked to her, I was like, hey, are you going to do that interview? And she was like, yeah. So I was surprised, too. Like, I, I, like, looked up your interviews yesterday, and I was just, like, curious to see how it went with the other girls my season. And then I saw that she missed it. So I haven't had a chance to talk to her about it yet. But I know, like, she definitely should be heard. I mean, her, her story is really amazing. And she's just 
a very like motherly maternal person mm -hmm. and the way that it came off when we were under this like insane amount of stress was just it looked a certain way and yeah mm -hmm. just not like that at all like she's one of the most loving people I've, i have in my life so um I, maybe like maybe we can do another one in the future where there's like a couple of the girls from our yes team. that would be so amazing i I, I think what i think what potentially scared her off is um the reaction and i'll say y'all i don't give a fuck i think what scared her off and what convinced her was the reaction that lisa got the last two times she came on now i cannot control these lovely people these hundreds now and later thousands of people who choose to watch this i can't control them y'all know and guys correct me Correct me when I'm wrong or call me when I'm right. I tell these people, I don't want y'all hating on people. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say shit at all. That's not the energy. I don't, listen, there are a lot of times I want to tear a bitch to pieces when I do these. You can see it all over my face. I want to annihilate. And I am a smart black man from the South, meaning I can read the eyes out of anybody. But I want to operate in love. I want to operate in understanding. I want to operate in friendship. I want to offer, um, uh, operate in peace. And all of a sudden, I tell these people, don't do that. Now, there are some times when the people come in here with the foolishness, Miss Monique. I'll be very honest. I can't save them. And I will try to save the people. I will try to save them so that the people aren't dragging them. But I, <laughs> hey, anyways, to, 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 to close out the Alexandria thing, I, I really hope she reconsiders. Um, I don't have any ill will towards her or anybody, but especially towards her. And um, as long as, as long as, and I'm speaking to my viewers, as long as er, the energy is positive and they're open and they're being honest and things like that, the people, the people, the people want to see you and they want to hear you and they want to love you and they want to understand you. Um, so hopefully when it can happen. Yeah, whenever she feels ready, you know, like I feel like we all mm -hmm. do like some crazy, like, like for me, it was the overall ex positive experience. But I think that yeah. we did go through a lot of trauma on that mm -hmm. show. A lot of people afterwards, just speaking for my season, like it took us time to really like process all of that shit. And yes. Sure, Alexandria went through it because she was like one of the main girls that they tried to like villainize kind of you know and um and the people on the internet can be really fucking mean like yes and i'm like for what? reading it because it was just like oh my god like why are people so mean <laughs> but um hopefully yeah hopefully she will want to come back and talk and i saw hopefully that hopefully and you know miss monique when i first started doing this my original goal and my goal still still to this day is just to talk to the people who are involved with my second favorite show of all time and ask them questions about the show however i think with um as it grew popular and stuff like that and people started sharing their experiences and you know thank god for blessing me to be the human that i am that i'm able to navigate it the best way possible it, it did become a safe space for a lot of people and a lot of responsibility whether i knew it at the time was placed on me and while i originally just thought i'm just talking to these people about this show that i love so much i have with that incident that happened i have now understood that if you if you want to navigate this water correctly there are some things that you do have to put in consideration and now i do put in consideration even when i select certain questions i do put in consideration that these things had a big effect on some of the girls some girls don't care some girls and guys don't care other girls it had a really really negative effect and i can only imagine being a part of one of pop culture's biggest reality tv shows of all time and you not getting the proper what you believe to be the proper editor treatment and then you're constantly having to be reminded fight through it's like i can understand i un, i truly 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 which is why i'm not completely upset with miss alexander because i understand and i'm I, i'm compassionate for her for that reason like i i get it i get it i totally get it yeah, and I know that her and Lisa are really close. Like, they um, they are, like, sisters. And um, I know they got close after the, the All-Star season. So I'm assuming that probably did have something to do with it. And, um, yeah, I'm curious. I'm going to call her after this and be like, what? Ooh, 
I'm curious. All right. The next person <laughs> on the list is Hannah. I love Hannah. She's amazing too. Um, mm -hmm. I she's a. I I saw her probably like right before the pandemic. I actually ran into her in the airport with, mm -hmm. with her boyfriend, and um, she's like the same except her style is even more elevated now. Like mm -hmm. she's always this like very free, like embodying this flower child. Mm -hmm. Like she literally is from the seventies. Um, and total sweetheart uh, and just like her own, her whole own vibe. Um, and yeah, I, I keep in touch with her too. I would love to, we were, we were talking about doing a shoot together soon. Um, but everything obviously was kind of like paused, but I did get to hang out with her. We went out a little bit in Vegas and, um, it was really fun. Turn it's on. so good, like, connecting to the girls after the show, because, like, we're, like, literally, I feel like those girls are, like, my sisters, like, my soul mm. sisters. Like, we went through some shit together, and no one else really ever understand that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Molly O'Connell. Molly is a bad bitch. Molly I is a bad her. bitch. <laughs> Molly is a bad bitch. <laughs> Um, Molly, I talk to you all the time too. We, um, we, we hung out in New York a few times and she, like, we like re-inspire each other a lot. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's work together. Like I'll, I always like try to put her in shows that I'm in and, um, oh, so, turn up. that's nice. Yeah, and then she um, she moved to New York like right when I left, mm -hmm. which sucks. But um, like, yeah, she really inspires me a lot because I know she's she's still working and um, just doing her thing in in the city. You know, like mm -hmm. that that living in New York is no joke. So um, I'm really proud of her. I'm really really proud of her. I know she's gone through a lot and and she's grown a lot too and she came out on top so mm -hmm. i'm really i'm really um grateful for her friendship mm -hmm. um and last but not least miss Brittany klein uh, Brittany is amazing like i i also got to hang out with her um in new york mm -hmm. and one of my first shows coming to new york we have a mutual friend do you know manny roman yes uh-huh yeah, he's like our like really close mutual friend. Um, mm -hmm. He he inspired, I think, both of us. Like, really inspired. Actually, with Molly too. Like, inspired us to get to New York and what to do and how to act and how to dress and how to just function in that industry. And um, I know he kind of took Brittany under his wing and. Um, it was really beautiful to see Brittany go from like the winner and then she's in New York, she's working, she's doing all the things. Her, obviously her walk is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, and then for her to just be like, you know what, like, this is not serving me anymore. Like, this is not, yeah. Just like, I'm, I'm out. Like that was like, damn, like that takes a lot of strength. And I really admire her for that. And mm -hmm. Um, for just like honoring her her soul and her spirit and going back home and she started a beautiful family and her another one beautiful I feel like everybody had boys from my season now that I think about it mm. interesting interesting um, but we keep in touch still like she's like still we, we support each other and um, I don't know if she's I don't know if she's modeling as much anymore. I think that she's kind of like just. Yeah, I think she's done. Yeah, I don't think she she vibed with the fakeness. Really, is what it came down to. Just like the mm. bullshit. Like, no, I don't want to deal with this. Um, I remember when I first saw, like first saw her in the casting, and I was just like, I was like, um, who's that? Like, she's very reserved to herself, and I remember she could like speak Spanish. And then she just kind of 
I don't want to say she looks like a normal girl because she doesn't, but she's definitely just like, what's the word? Um, tall, skinny, but doesn't like, she's not extra, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see her in front of the camera and on the runway and you're just like, God damn, like she has, she has everything. Um, so yeah, it's been really inspiring to see her just be like, you know what? No, fuck that. I'm going to live my life the way I want to. And, and you know, good for her. Mm -hmm. This industry is not for everybody, you know? I had the pleasure of speaking to her um, a couple of months. I, did I tell y'all this? I'm talking about my classroom. Did I tell y'all this? I spoke to her in the, um, in the DMs and we spoke, of course, about her doing a chat. Um, who I believe I believe I was talking to Manny at the time. He was helping me out with it, and she sent me a long thing. I won't I won't go into detail about it, but 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 what I will say is, as much as we as fans, guys, I'm talking about us us out here. As much as we you know we want to reconnect with these people, a lot of these people have moved on and don't want to and don't want to revisit this shit you know what i'm saying yeah. and like it goes back again what, what i said earlier as much as we get entertainment from watching it a lot of this stuff that we're entertained by was at somebody else's somebody else's expense and yeah. why, that's why i'm always so grateful and i tell every guest i'm so thankful that you're doing this because i understand like some people and like Brittany, they don't want to talk about it they don't want to like it it's done it's packaged up it's back there yeah christmas is coming yeah, it was like, gosh, like, what, we gotta is respect amount, that. what is the amount of girls that, like, literally had to go through so much therapy after the show? You know, like, it was, it was, it was a good experience, but, but it also, like, they really were trying to fuck with you mentally. Like, they were trying mm -hmm. to get you to pr produce better TV and drama. Mm -hmm. So making it all the way to the end, you know, I can just imagine the stuff that, that her and Molly went through. Um, and it was good, like, at they were so close, you know, at the mm -hmm. end of it, like they ended up living together in New York and just supporting each other. And um, yeah, I can, I can see that she's just like, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm good. Yeah. But, and she wasn't, she wasn't mean about it. She was so sweet to me. Like she was so sweet. So, yeah. sweet, so sweet. She was so sweet. So sweet. Um, But like, I'm telling my classroom now, like y'all, like on, on, on some G shit before we move on, like if I never get a chance to talk to Jade, if I never got a chance to talk to a lot of people that you guys say that you guys want to talk to, it's okay. Like I'm not oppressed. I'm not pressed about it. I'm grateful that Monique, I think you're number 80. I think you're number 80. 80? I think oh, so. Really? That's yeah, I think, crazy. I, 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 think, I think you're number 80. Good. Um, I, That's amazing. And like, not to get emotional, but. I really want people to grasp the idea that I only started doing this because I was one bored in the house. And mm -hmm. I thought that maybe me being a super fan and me being very knowledgeable out the, about the show that I, I could, you know, ask questions. This originally was only supposed to be, I think 10 girls. Then I, I took it to one girl from each cycle. Then it just, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. I'm so appreciative of all of y'all spending time with me, spending time with my, with my my viewers. Some people I've gained friendship, sharing your stories. Like I'm I'm grateful. And anybody who does not want to, Oliver respects it. Oliver may not be the person that you want to talk to. You may have another opportunity, and I'm okay with that. Like I celebrate you, I applaud you. I'm going to support it. I'm going to watch it. Like I'm just grateful, just grateful. Yeah, I can see that you're coming from that space too, just very loving and, and sincere. And that's why I was like, so like excited to, to do this with you. And I've had people like the past few months now, please do an interview with Oliver. Um, so good job getting us all out here. Like we've never had an opportunity to, to come out and talk, you know? Like, I know you, I remember you saying like, this isn't, you're not a therapist, but like this is very therapeutic for, oh, thank you. for us. Thank you, thank you. And I hate that you guys. I mean, not I hate you guys, but I know somebody. I know a lot of y'all gonna roll your eyes when I say this. But when I talked to Tyra, it's in the video. She she said thank you for doing this because a lot of my girls, whether she was being sincere or not, I don't know. That is not for me to determine, y'all. That is not. I don't gotta have a hell a jail cell to put a bitch in, so I can't say. 
But all I can take the woman is for her word until she shows me different. She said, thank you for doing this because a lot of the girls back then did not have any outlets to talk about any of this yeah. stuff. And she said, in you know certain parts I didn't include she was like it's good to see that they're talking about this stuff again and they're and they're having an opportunity to talk about it unfiltered unedited in the way that they can talk about it yeah exactly I think a lot of people were scared to talk because we had that like crazy crazy contract mm -hmm. that was like 6,000 pages long and we all were like oh my god we can't say anything but it feels like things are just more relaxed now mm-hmm it's cool that she reached out to you and said that. Um, and mm -hmm. she's paying attention, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Let's move to the judges' table. What are your thoughts on um, Andre Leon Talley? I mean, he's iconic, legendary. I'm so, like, I'm so cool I got to meet him. I'm Let jealous. Him. I am so jealous. Oh, my gosh, I love him. I just recently watched an interview he did. I think it's on Netflix or something. And he's just so iconic. And Yes. You know, yes. out of all the seasons, like, I'm happy that we got he we got him. And that he likes some of my pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. like, that was really cool. Um, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Mom. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he was, he's just a beautiful human being. He's like, you know, super inspirational. I don't know... And I, I'm not even going to mention it. Y'all will Google it. But I just hope that situation that he had is cleared up. And I was so hurt because I was going to reach out to him um, because he is one of, like, my personal inspirations, him being Black, him being queer, him being, you know, a lar of, 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 of larger size and him being so confident, being able to speak so well. He commands so much power when he enters into the room. Everybody always listens to him. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully the things clear up and he gets into a space when whenever I reach out to him because I, I did reach out to him because I was like mm, I don't want to feel selfish like you going through stuff but I want to talk to you I, yeah. I don't do um, but I think I, I will a know. little bit later hopefully Andre please yeah I, I don't even know I would I cry I would be on here crying like tearing yeah. up like I would be melting you'll get him <laughs> okay um Nigel Barker Nigel's cool. I mean... <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I, I saw that whole thing just happen right now. What does that mean? He's cool. I didn't get to know him that uh -huh. well. He was one of, like, the judges that was just, like, I really wanted to, like, vibe with him or, or talk to him. And he's just, um, I don't know, like, if he, he didn't like my looks or... I just remember like not being able to really connect with him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I can't remember if we ever even shot with him or was he even doing? With... He's a Don't start me the lion. I'm already mixing up cycles right now. Sorry. <laughs> Don't start me the lion. Um, he's he's cool. I mean, I follow his work still now. I think he's mm -hmm. awesome. I wish I got to spend a little bit more time. I spoke to him a couple of, I think it may be a month, months ago now. And yeah. I got the sense, um, I got the sense top model was a job for that man. That man showed up to work. He clocked in when they said cut, he clocked out. He was going home to his wife and kids. Like he didn't <laughs> care about none of that stuff. Exact. Mm -hmm. um, did you get him on live or just like Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, wow. That's oh, this awesome. morning I've been out here popping my pussy very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've been popping it very hard, girl, for the children. I'm only doing it for the children. Yes, for the children. <laughs> what about Miss J? Was Miss J there? Miss J was, was there. Yeah. She was there, yes. Like, Miss J is incredible. Um, Miss J was the one that really did connect to us and gave us the time and energy and showed up for us in every way and was, like, there, like, helping us practice our walk when the cameras weren't on. And... I actually ran into Miss J last year at the Grammy, like some Grammy party. Turn up. And, and I, we noticed each other. And I like, at first I'm a little like, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say anything like, like, oh, he's having, she's probably not going to remember me. And she made eye contact with me and was like, how are you? Like, come here. And um, like, 
we got to catch up and a little bit and like take a picture together. It was like a really cool moment for me. Like mm -hmm. Miss J is super real. Like mm. I love, I Miss love Miss her. You. So much. That was one of my like best takeaways from the show is meeting Miss mm. J. Gotcha, gotcha. What about Mr. J? Mr. J, um, <laughs> I, I love, I, I love Mr. J. I didn't really get to connect with him either. I felt like sometimes he was like, um, I don't know, like a, just a little bitchy towards me. Not just me in general, not just me, but in general. Um, mm -hmm. Like would just kind of like sit back while we're doing our photo shoots and like judge us and be like, yeah okay yeah I like that or no that's not working for me and it would just be like this like I don't know like we we needed more more like loving direction I felt uh -huh. like so mm -hmm. we we're getting a little bit like judged but I guess that's the nature of the show right so right. um I love that he I watched his interview with his live thing with Molly of like a month or two ago. And I thought it was really cool that he's, is being so real about like his experience on the show mm -hmm. and the Tyra and everything. And <laughs> <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy the way it all unfolded, but um, I think he's genuinely a really good person. Yes. You know, I've had a lot of people come on here and say that they did not have the best interactions with, Mr. J, and I can't really talk to him much because I've only interacted with him virtually and over the phone and via text message. Um, mm -hmm. But out of my interaction with him, he is so nice. Yeah. He I think so he's nice. nicer like, in real life than maybe he was portraying on the show. That was the vibe I kind of got. Like, I think that we would be friends like in real life, but during that, it was just kind of like, I don't know, just a different... Um, not not super friendly now drag race is currently the reality tv show for the girls at the moment in time but i really do think there is a space because fashion police doesn't come on anymore um i don't know if project one ray is still on anyways i think there is a space it may not be the america's next top model reboot that we want but it may be a space for something i would love to see Jay Manuel back on my television screen terrorizing people. I want to see him Simon Cowell people. I really do. That's what he would be really good at. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about Tyra Lynn Banks, the queen mother, the head huntress? You know, I always will have respect for Tyra. Um, mm -hmm. I really will always appreciate her, her for the opportunity she gave me. Mm. And, you know, for choosing me to be on the show, um, I wish we would have been able to spend more time with her. I mm -hmm. think that what everybody felt like we, I always really looked up to Tyra in my early years of modeling. Mm. Because she was like, you know, she's black and she's curvy and she's, um, she's got this sexier vibe. And that's like how I saw my career going was this like sexier image so I really looked up to her and then to not really be able to spend time with her was super disappointing but it, at the end of the day it's like it's it's work it's her it's business and it's, that's show. Like, it's a show it's not she's not there to be friends with us mm -hmm. um it would have been cool like to to bond with her more but um I still respect her I mean mm -hmm. I I see her like every so often I can I can interact with her a little bit on social media, um, which is cool. Like I, yeah, I know that some girls feel a type of way about her, but oh, they I, tear they tear Tyra to pieces. I know it's limb got, by limb, nail by nail, they tear, they tear they tear them. God. Like I don't think she deserves <laughs> that. You know, but, um. Yeah, I remember I did see her one time after I was like doing a job in LA somewhere and I remember seeing her and she didn't acknowledge me. She just kind of left. And I was like really offended by that at first. Like, you know, how are you going to see me and then not say hi? Like, you remember. Did she, did she see you? I, maybe not. 
but I thought so. Like I thought mm -hmm. that, like I'm like six, three or four in heels. Like, how do you miss me? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I, that's why I like really appreciate it when Miss J was like, "How are you? Come here, Monique. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice to see you." That's like, beautiful. Just, yeah. So, um, but maybe she would be like that now. You know, if I saw her, like all this shit that she's gone through the past year. Can and I be then also, oh, go ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go also, like, she had a baby, so maybe she has a little, you know, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more um, uh, empathy for the girls that, like, adore her. You know, and when I spoke to her, I think we spoke for, like, maybe 12, 15 minutes. The, the fidelity of the video, guys, it is not really, like, the clearest, because, you know, it was a screen recording that got uploaded and stretched and all the other stuff. But when she called me, I didn't take this. Uh, I could tell mother was somewhere very peaceful. Mother was somewhere outside. And I met. <laughs> Tara had the glow. I'm not saying she did. I am not saying she did. But she had the glow to me of what I consider to be freshly fucked. That lady looked like she <laughs> is at peace. And she is chilling. And she is enjoying her latter years. And she would give a fuck. Is her baby daddy like wh who is he like so she's got him like just tucked away <laughs> <laughs> she was glowing i said yes ma'am it's sorry you better glow girl <laughs> okay so we're done with the roll call i have some fan questions for you i want to get you out here very soon so i'm going to zip through these and you can just tell me okay. the first thing that comes to your brain okay are you doing well over there huh yeah okay okay, okay good are we still good on time yes Okay, perfect. Okay, so official.art wants to know, do you think that Britney was a pre-selected winner? Uh, my initial reaction is no, but maybe because she got like the best fucking makeover. Like her makeover was like iconic. Mm -hmm. And it's like just everybody else got like these weird crappy makeovers like it just didn't they did really, her right they did her right like it elevated her whole um shoot yeah um i don't know i feel like maybe reality tv that, or that reality tv really is kind of all planned but if she had been acting like like for me at the end i was like I can't take this. Like I'm the type of person that needs to have some space by myself to reset. And then I can, you know, be mm -hmm. around people. And, um, so maybe if she had been like, I'm not going to talk, you know, she probably would have got eliminated. So, mm -hmm. um, so no, I, I, I don't think it was pre. Perspective. Yeah. Maybe halfway through, but not from the beginning. Ginger underscore Jew underscore Fro wants to know, what are your thoughts on the Boba Runway? I mean, that was ridiculous. But, I mean, they, like, they made us, like, do the whole walk. And then Mr. J is like, you guys, that was horrible. Like, you need to redo everything with more fierceness, more attitude, walk faster just what are you doing and then we're like oh my god like this is our first time like really like in front of people and that's when people the girls started like falling in the bubble and like Dominique's like trying to pose and they're like <laughs> it was she nailed it <laughs> that was horrible and then like they're like filming people's reactions like in the crowd like so stupid like mm -hmm. Um, that wasn't really necessary, you know, but it was, I guess, it, for me, it felt like they're running out of things to do on the show. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've never, I mean, I've done other shows over water, but not on a 12-inch board, like, inside of a plastic bubble. No. Like, that was just, I mean, I guess now with COVID, maybe it'll be, like, a regular thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
everybody will be walking around in these bubbles. Right. <laughs> like, back up for me, bitch. Don't touch my bubble. <laughs> oh, were there other, were there any other moments when filming Cycle Sixteen that we didn't get to see, or that, or got like redone or reshot? Um, that was the main one that they were like first time everybody stayed on the board. Like, no, redo it. Um. Yeah, that's 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 the only time I can really think of that happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and guys, when I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my monitor. Just by the, I meant to say that earlier, but my monitor is right here with all my questions. Um. So, Sidness ninety nine wants to know: Was there anything we did not see from Molly's car monologue about her makeover? About her car monologue. Yes, I I believe what 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 Sidness is referring to is when um she was in the car I believe leaving from the makeover and she was talking she was talking about her hair. My God, that was I don't want to laugh at her, <laughs> but that was some of the funniest shit <laughs> ever encountered. Like mm -hmm. that was the most ridiculous weave, and I mean. She was like really like she was like whipping it around all the time and like, she was, like <laughs> all having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> like we loved it, but mm -hmm. but then it got messed up because like she actually had like melts on her head, you know, and like that when we were filming, like it's just like go 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 nonstop. So waking up at like six seven in the morning and getting back at like midnight mm -hmm. one two. Then you have to go to confessionals and then just super like lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. Um. But no, it was really hard for her and, and messed up. Like then it went from like being a funny thing, like what is this ramen noodle weave, to like this oh poor baby is in the hospital now, you know. So she literally had to go to the fucking hospital mm -hmm. and get that removed. Like it's just like at that level of production, you know better than to put that weave on on her hair. You know. And listen, catch this. Just for them on the last episode of the last day to cut both of their hair off. Right. <laughs> Y'all could have done this on the very beginning. Cut that shit off. Right? Isn't that what they normally did? Like, chop? Yeah, I, okay. I remember Molly hated that cut. So, um, I believe it is Kimmy Arrow is, is saying, Monique, please fill all the tea with the team challenge with Molly and Alexandria. Um... Like, which one was that? Like, the beat, was it? To be quite honest, Miss uh, Miss Monique, I, right now my brain is not triggering it. Listen, I, top model right now to me is one big old season. So uh, yeah. I'm thinking shit that happened on cycle seven really happened on cycle 25. Look at the they jump when I said 25. Ain't no 25, y'all. I think it was probably like, um, I guess what what's coming to my mind is when we did the Jaguar shoot or, or maybe it was the B shoot where like Hannah started crying. They're saying, tell me guys, they're saying the director challenge, cover girl. Oh my God. So me and Molly and uh, yeah, me and Molly and Lex were paired up and- Yes, okay, yes, I remember it, yes, <laughs> I remember now, yes. Oh, this one I like really did like Mr. J in this episode because he was like, Monique, you're so calm, cool and collected. And that really stuck with me, like, for my life. I'm like, stay calm, cool, and collected, you know? Um, but what happened, we were, like, under an insane amount of pressure to memorize the script, and Lex was the talent. And, you know, sometimes she just right, comes off. Right, I'm the talent. But I'm, I'm, the, the, I'm the fucking talent. I'm the talent. She's exactly like the talent. But, no, she... Um, I guess she just sometimes like her her demeanor will come off a little bit bossy. So um, Molly and I just looked at each other like, okay, like this is the energy's off. How are mm -hmm. we gonna even perform right now and win this? Because I hadn't win won anything yet at that point. So I was just like, how do we fix this? Mm -hmm. Let's do a group hug. <laughs> Should we <laughs> kiss or? Should we kiss someone? <laughs> I don't know. Some of the stuff that came out of my mouth is just like mind blowing. Like, mm -hmm. should we all kiss? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, but I guess it, I guess it kind of helped, right? Like she got it together, and I thought we did good. <laughs> we should have won. Still, think we should have won that. B Steve two one five is asking: Does she think the fans from the challenge were real fans or paid actors? Definitely paid actors. Like. I think that um, that whole scene was, like, very staged and set up. And the guy, like, I think because I had talked about that experience with my gym teacher asking me to do adult film, um, I think that they, like, planted him in there because this guy comes up to me and he's like, I've seen you before. Oh, yeah, I've seen you in adult film. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's really messed up. It's fucked up. And then he's like, can I kiss you? And I was like, oh, no, like, <laughs> get away from me. Like, <laughs> oh, just like really creepy, you know? And then mm -hmm. me, like, in my young, I don't know what to do right now frame of mind was like, ask Alexandria, will do it. Just because I, like, I probably knew that she could, like, ha mentally, like, handle, like, a little dweeb like that coming up to her. Like, she would be like, oh, hell no. Like, Actually, I think she ended up giving him a kiss on the cheek. Mm -hmm. She took one for the team. Um, but, but yeah, that was that really pissed me off. Like, I was like <laughs> why are you trying to put me as this person? I, I would never do that. And then, then I was like super irritated. And then they like literally took a garbage can and like flung it in the air. So garbage was just like. All, all over this place and they like clean it up and I was just like first of all I don't do garbage okay so but anyways I I would do it now but Victoria I forgot about that I remember <laughs> that moment very vividly girl you were not living for any of that bullshit literally no. like, oh, what is this trash what is this trash and I think this leads to me saying this is from BC215 they said thank you for giving us an iconic moment in ANTM that plays in my head a lot her throwing the rolls of paper towels on the floor during her default moment. <laughs> Y'all go clean this shit up. I, I, I didn't do it, so I'm not cleaning it. That's how I felt. And then, like, I remember the girls, like, kind of being like, just stop, Mooney. Just, just come on. Just do it. And I was like, no. I hate that. <laughs> and then my, I was like, I'm talking about, like, I hope they get food poisoning. Like, that was just horrible. But I really <laughs> wanted to go to that dinner. With Miss J. But yeah, so that's one of those cringy moments for me where I'm like, whew, little temper tantrum on national television. Nice. <laughs> Jurassic Bradis wants to know what was her favorite moment from the show? Oh, gosh, my favorite moment. Um, oh, it's tough. Um, you know, just like meeting all the girls has been like a really special part of my life. Um, like that, that sisterhood that we have. But I think like my favorite, my favorite moment was probably doing the shoot with the truck. Sorry, garbage truck. <laughs> um, oh my God, I hate garbage trucks. So Clearly. She didn't like them then. She don't like them now. <laughs> but really, I don't deal with garbage. I need it. <laughs> oh. um, so, yeah, like, shooting with the Jaguar was really cool. Um, that little baby. Even though I'm like, I don't like cats. Um, and then the bee photo shoot was cool, too. Like, I've never done anything like that. Like, I remember them taking honey and putting it on my cheek so that the bees would, like, come and eat. They were eating it off of me. Yeah, it was gnarly. I, was I remember like when we got we got to that shoot. It was like you could just hear the bees in the background, like <gasps> this like low buzzing sound. We're just like, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> so Do that you was SpongeBob. I used to. I love SpongeBob. Do you remember that episode when that I can't remember if it was a butterfly. I think it was a butterfly that was flying around. 
but every time like people would see the butterfly and it would cut to it it would take it out of the cartoon and it'd be like this loud buzzing sound of, like this like insect <laughs> that's what i think of anything that flies that's not a mammal i'm like what is go please get them out of the sky right now yeah it was yeah it's it was it was challenging. And then we were like, did the bees, did the stingers get removed? Or like, how was that even possible? Because like, what if someone's really allergic? And like, they got stuck. I think oh, they, they were removed. done. Oh, they were finished. They removed the stingers, I guess. I no, if a person was, if a person, I, I'm glad nobody was allergic because it would have took, she killed that photo shoot to a whole other level. <laughs> it would have been oh a whole different <laughs> Literally <laughs> got killed on the photo shoot. Drop that oh. gorgeous. What happened? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, since you've told me that Alexandria is your good girlfriend, all of us should not really expect you to answer this the way that they thought you were going to answer. But I'm going to answer. I'm going to ask you anyways. Kyle underscore Israel is asking, did you see anything else in Alexandria's diary that did not air? And I'm asking that for you just to talk about the whole diary moment. Gosh, I. That's something like I'll never, like live down like it's just um i should have never done that don't read people's diaries like it's a huge violation of privacy mm -hmm. um lex if you're watching i'm sorry again um but i really got set up by the producers for that they were like we we were all doing our interviews all hanging out after some day of shooting and they were like i at the end of my interview they're like well you sh maybe you should look in her diary and i was like okay so we go back in, Lex goes into her interview, and then that's when I'm like, should we look at your diary? Like this like evil child. And I literally just opened one page and all I saw I said was like, I'm having a hard time, like the girls hate me or something. Like it's really sad. Like, what the why am I why and then that's when I'm like, it's bad. And then I just like shut it. And it seemed like this horrible thing that I was like you know, read all this horrible shit, but that's literally the only thing I saw before I was like, my conscience was like, stop it. What are you doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess, you know, they got like the little commercial thing that they wanted out of it. But no, there was nothing bad in there. <laughs> you guys happy? She told you. All right, let it rest. Um, <laughs> three more questions for you really quickly. Monique, um, you and, and, and Dahlia were, this is from course underscore sh chate, shatty, I don't know. You and Dahlia were upset about the chicken being left on the counter. Did you guys ever find out it was Molly's chicken and not Alexandria's chicken? She admitted this and all of, she admitted this in, in uh, her chat I, with me. It was Molly, it was Molly's chicken. I literally was like living for that moment when I, <laughs> she was like, it's, it was mine. I, I did not know that. Like... It's funny because I was thinking about that today. Like I'm vegan now, but before I was, I I still used to eat meat. So mm -hmm. I just remember like looking in the fridge and being like, "Ew! Like who would do that?" That's disgusting. <laughs> and just egging on the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, like it turned into this huge wildfire, and everybody's like yelling at each other. And I cook. I know how to do things. <laughs> I so, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was blown way out of proportion mm -hmm. and it was like crazy drama, but, um, that wasn't my intention. <laughs> 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 yes, ma'am. Yes, um, ma'am. And, uh, my second to last question, this is from Jared Rumor. Shout out to Jared Ruber. He, he is asking, were you able to use any of your photos from Top Model? And how was your post-Top Model career? Um, I guess it just depends on, like, the job I'm going after, if I'm going to put the Top Model pictures in there or not. Not anymore, because it's been over 10 years. But, um, you know, we keep our books relevant to new material. But um, I went through a phase where I didn't like to tell people I was on the show. Um, and in the modeling world because I got some weird feedback but then like I just like started to realize like this is a part of my story and who I am and I was selected over thousands of girls so I should be I should own it and be proud of it you know but um 
yeah and i think it did give me opportunities like it got me out of my small town in illinois like after the show ended i'm like i'm moving to la that's it so i remember i went into la models and they were like this this agent was like you know you top model girls think you can just come in here and get everything handed to you and it's not how it works and that was my first experience like oh like that wasn't my intention I'm like I'm literally just looking for representation you know so then i wouldn't lead with that like i would just be like oh yeah i was on that show like like i didn't yeah so but no um you know it's it's been it's been cool to see like the people that like were inspired by the show like mm -hmm. i love working with aspiring models now and like i've been a runway coach and and i really like want to have a passion for helping aspiring models because like oh, i didn't have that that guidance like my mom was always a part of my career but mm -hmm. but then when i moved like i had to figure everything out by myself and like you know realizing like oh maybe i'm not the best for the la market i need to be in new york like little things like that or what to i remember my first casting in new york i showed up in like a wife beater and a push-up bra and like a little jean skirt like you don't wear that to castings in new york mm -hmm. you know so to see how it has like how i can inspire other people that that want to get into that industry um you know it's not really positive like i'm super grateful for the experience and it has opened other doors for me for sure Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, Victoria, this brings me to Mount Victoria. So, you know, the girls... A lot of my friends call me that. It's okay. What'd you say? A lot of my friends call me Victoria. Well, you know, because it's, it's like my part of your name, though. Monique Victoria. So I, I think my brain just gravitated towards Victoria. And they were like, her name is not Victoria. <laughs> Y'all don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Monique, this, this brings me to my last question. If you were standing for Tyra Banks right now, and guys... We have Miss Monique probably for five more minutes. So if you want to get a badge and ask her a question before she goes and we have time, I'll ask her. So do that right now while I'm asking her this last question. My last question is, if you were standing before Tyra Banks right now, what would you say to her? I would say thank you so much for this opportunity and for changing my life. And um, like, I love you and thank you. Oh, yeah. that is so amazing! <laughs> that is so amazing. Is there anything you want to shamelessly plug? Um, I'm doing a show tomorrow for the NAMI National Alliance on Mental Health. It's a charity show. I'm watching for Jonathan Mark Stein Altier. Mm -hmm. So, and that's through Art Heart Fashion. Some people. I've known them for, for a really long time. So, um, yeah, thank you for letting me plug that in. And then, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be back on the runway. Like, for a while there, it was it was getting like, oh, God, it's fashion week again. Like, this is so annoying. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, fucking can't wait to mm -hmm. get back to work. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then also like I have I'm super into teaching yoga now and um like if you wanna follow my other account, it's underscore plant based yoga underscore and that's more of my like real life like I post more pictures there of like me in real life versus mm -hmm. this account is more for modeling. Gotcha. So, yeah. Well that is beautiful. We have a couple of last minute <laughs> questions for you. Randy Milan wants to know was she asked to do all stars? Oh, yeah, actually. I was supposed to be on All Stars. And I was super stoked. I think they asked Molly, too. And then they took Lex. So. Well, I think I think Molly's explanation was at the time that they would have shot for a Molly, she said at the time they would have shot All Stars, Cycle 16 was still on. And she hadn't yeah. lost yet. So people would have right. known that she didn't win. The people who were there. Yeah, I was super bummed about that, too, because, like, the pay was way better. Like, we got paid pennies for that show. And um, I was, like, not that it was all about money. Obviously, I wanted the exposure. But, um, like, they didn't give me any explanation as to why they didn't they choose didn't, you. 
Yeah, I'm sure it was just that's the business, you know. Yeah, they wanted more more drama. Mm -hmm. And I would I would do it now though if they have another All Star cycle. Like I'm ready. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm they are having another All Star cycle. I was really? one of the judges. I'm yes. one of the judges. Um, you. Jay Manuel will be one of the judges. Janice Dickinson is coming back. Wait, are you oh. serious? No. <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh, everything. We really should do like a hosted reunion though, where you like host the girls. You know, I really do feel, and I don't know. Well, I do know because I always knew Tyra Banks would call me. I I knew that on the inside. I knew she would always call me. Like I just knew she would. It, it will happen eventually because that's how my life works out. It, it, I'm, it manifestation. But yeah. I really do strongly believe there is an inner tug in me telling that Top Model is going to get some last big hoorah. Mm -hmm. so, and okay. potentially, I'm, I feel like I sh I mean, I'm a too hard. Yes, Oliver should be there. I should be there. And if I'm Absolutely. not, and if I'm not, I'm going to be like Lisa D'Amato and post bats. <laughs> I'm going to tear it all down. I'm going to burn it to the ground and say, fuck this shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, we we definitely need you to um, orchestrate all of that drama. I think it's amazing what you're doing, and um, yeah, I just like so appreciate you holding space for all of us. Thank you. And you're okay, the perfect so let's... like personality to do it too. So. Oh, thank you, pretty. Okay, let me get some of these questions. All right, really quickly. When you got eliminated, they said you were coasting through. Would what would you have done differently in your group photo shoot with Brittany, Michaela, and Jacqueline? Yeah, I failed to mention this. That they said was like the better shot, but you still got sent home. What happened? What you feel? I don't know because I left that shoot feeling like I got, I got that shoot. Like mm. I, we got first photo. I was super confident, and then they just, you know, they pick, they pick whatever they want. So of course, there's going to be bad like images they can choose from. And I feel like they just chose a bad image of me. And I think what really happened is I was starting to feel very like, like I started to take baths a lot and try to like exclude myself from the group because I needed mm -hmm. to like recharge. And as soon as I started doing that, that's when I got cut. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got in trouble because I was talking when we were under ice and they like took my mail privileges away where I couldn't like talk to or write letters to my family. And I'm super close to my mom, so I was like, that was like, well, fine, then I'm not gonna talk then. That was my solution. So now I would definitely be more prepared, you know, um, for for what I was getting into and and just have more energy. That's really uh -huh. what they want you to be on at all times. And I get that now. <laughs> mm. Thank you for that. Marquez Reynolds 99 is asking, what are your thoughts on the hands on fire runway? This hand is on fire. Oh my, oh my God, by the way, your voice is so beautiful. I love your music. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was so inspired when you said you could sing in all those different languages. Like what? Oh, thank That's you. Amazing. Thank you. Um, the fire runway was really cool. I mean, it was also one of those things like, you guys are running out of things to do because this is way out there. We had to wear these big gloves that were like soaked in gasoline. <laughs> and then like, as we're like going down the runway, this huge cannonball sound was going off. Like, I don't even know what that was, but it was terrifying. It was like literally so much adrenaline the whole time. Mm. Like what is going on right now? <laughs> like, but it was still a really cool experience. I mean, I've never done anything like that since. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was good. Natalie underscore ever underscore after is saying this to you, Monique. I just wanted to let you know that I didn't like you at the time of the show. But after watching this, I see you are super sweet and an awesome person. Thank you for doing this chat. I'm really happy to hear that. Like, you know, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here because I really was portrayed like a really bratty young spoiled girl I'm not that you know so thank you love. like I appreciate no, you so much no you're so welcome 
And with that pretty lady, I'm going to let you go out of the classroom. You did an amazing job today. And I will say this will definitely be one of my more enjoyed chats. I enjoyed talking to you. I felt like we've learned, we've known each other forever. I yeah, really enjoyed this. Let me know if you ever come to LA. I would love to hang out with you. Okay, so fun fact. Um, I wanted to like go get away for a couple of days. So I was like, ooh, should I go to LA tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, why not? Yes, come, yes. It's amazing here. I live in Manhattan Beach, so I can show you the west side. And yeah, that would be amazing. Let me know. I'll let you know, but don't don't bank on it. But I was I, I'm gonna fly yes. somewhere tomorrow. I don't know where I'm flying, <laughs> but I'm gonna fly somewhere for, for for like a day or two. I am. Do it. Monique, I love you. I'm sending you hugs and kisses and all the things of the things. Listen, when I come back to LA, I don't know if you are a dispensary girl, but we must go down to the dispensary and get into yes. the things of the slings, of the hings and slinging slashers. And I just oh, thoroughly thanks. enjoyed you. And maybe Alexandria could come along. <laughs> Is she frozen? Oh, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. All right, y'all. I don't know if she's gone or if her phone did something, but Monique, if you can hear my voice, everyone, let's send Monique love, kisses, and hugs from do for doing an amazing, amazing Cycle 16 a and exclusive. That was... Hold on. Instagram, I really want y'all to fix this. You know, every time it comes out, I'm like, I'm so glad I'm wearing panties, y'all. Because I am... <laughs> A slight nudist at home. I'm like, girl, I, clothes is too much. I don't believe in clothes. I don't believe in clothes. I don't believe clothes and food should be complicated. We all just got to wear it. We all got to eat it. Let's just get something and move on about our day. But I'd be glad I'd be putting on bottoms. Y'all saw about this? I went to the Nike store and I said, oh, let me dress like a boy <laughs> while I got on lashes. And... <laughs> Anyways, y'all, it was so much fun doing this. Look, I carried it. Carried it. Oh! I cannot wait. I'm, listen, I'm not drinking any liquor. I'm not eating any gummies. I'm going to eat all greens and broccoli before I meet the carry D. I need to be empty in it because <laughs> I, I got to have my, I got to be right that day. Um, I enjoy doing these so much. Like, I really enjoy doing these so much. And I enjoy when um, the guest guys are just so um, candid and so nice. And they're speaking from honest play. Oh, my God. This chat was so enjoyable. It will be uploaded on the Oliver Twix TWIXT YouTube channel where you can watch this chat and about, about 80 other chats. I think, girl, I'm not even going to. Somebody told me if you played my chats. I did an interview with some podcast. I said, if you played my chats from the first one to the end, it's like three days then. So it's probably like four or five now. Um, but I love y'all. I, I enjoy doing this. Um, um, I look forward to it each and every time. Um, we have another chat tomorrow that I think you guys will really enjoy before we get to this carry D on Friday. And I will possibly be taking a slight little break after this week just so I can, you know, see to my other business ventures and make sure everything is going great. But I will be populating my content with ATM video. So, because there's some stuff I have in the cans I ain't let y'all know. Y'all know, y'all know I always got a trick, a trick to slip and slide. Y'all already know. I love y'all. Be safe out there. Make sure you guys are loving. You guys are caring. You guys are being compassionate. You guys are being good human beings out there because you're in my classroom and I said nothing but great, great things from all you bitches. I love you. Be sure to parade in the mother loving Kegel because um, you never know when you have to sit on something. And there's not a lot of time between <laughs> the proposition and the idea to sit on it. Ha 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 ha!